Yo guys, what the hell is going on? This is CSS for Beginners Lesson 18 and in this video we're going to talk all about attribute selectors. That's coming up. <laughs> Alright, so here I am back in the HTML file. I've totally stripped out the syntax.css but before we get started with the CSS I quickly want to have a quick recap of what attributes are in HTML. So, essentially attributes are a way of giving HTML tags additional information about that tag. So, this here would be an attribute of ID. Uh, this here would be a class attribute, this here would be a rel attribute, this a type attribute, etc. Anything you see in green text here is an attribute. Now, if you want to learn more about attributes in HTML, I have done a video on that in my HTML for be uh, Beginners course, so I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. But for the rest of us, we're going to get cracking and we're going to see how awesome these attribute selectors are. Now, they are really, really awesome because they can target pretty much any tag on your page that has an attribute associated with it and you can get really specific with these like I'll show you in this video. But we'll start with a basic example and what we're going to say is we're going to go after any span here which has a class associated with it, this class attribute. Now it doesn't matter what that class attribute is, it could be deck, it could be halls, it could be anything you want the class to be. All we're saying is that the span must have a class attribute associated with it. So how would we do this? Well the first thing we do is we write our span element here in the selector. And then the attribute portion of the selector is always contained within these square brackets. So that's the next thing we do. And then the next step is to write the attribute name. In this case, it's class. So we just write class. And that's it. That right there, my friends, is an attribute selector. And what we're saying is we want all the span elements that have a class attribute associated with it. So that's these three here. Not this one, because there's no class. And we're going to color these purple. So... Oops, I spelled that wrong. Purple. So we'll save this and view this in a browser now. Open with Chrome. And there we go, guys. Everything is purple here. These three spans and this one is still black. So what else can we do? Well, we can do it with any attribute whatsoever. Say we want to target these divs here. And in fact, just for uh, just for demonstration purpose, I'm going to do another div, but I'm not going to give it an ID and then within that I'll do p tag this is the third div and I'm going to save that so what we're going to do is just go after div tags with an ID attribute associated with it so just these two here this one and this one not this so how would we do that well again we would write our element name which is div and then the square brackets and then we write the attribute name which is ID and we're saying there oops sorry I've got this wrong that should be div the element name not ID and then we're saying there we want every div element which has an ID attribute associated with it and we're going to give these a background of grey yeah and we'll save that and view this in a browser And there we go. So these two here, these divs have a background of grey because they have an ID associated with it. And this third one here, this div, doesn't have a background of grey. So again, doesn't matter what the ID is or what the class is, just that they have those attributes associated with them. Cool. Now, what if we want to be more specific? What if we want to say the class should be something specific like deck or the ID should be uh, main content or the title should be Google? Well, let's give that a whirl, eh? Let's first of all target all A's with a oops, a title attribute associated with it. And it doesn't matter what that title is, we're going to give these a colour of red. So hopefully that should be these two links here because they both have this title attribute. So we'll save that and we'll view this in a browser again. And there we go, these two are red because they have a title attribute. This one here remains blue. Now, what if we want to get more specific? We want the title to be equals um, search engine, which is this title here. This A link has a title attribute of search engine. And notice this, guys, this here is identical to this, both in terms of case sensitivity, I've got the capital there, and the white space here has to be identical. Essentially, a good way of doing this is to copy all of this and paste it in between there. Okay, so let's save that and hopefully we'll just go after this tag here now. So we'll view this in a browser. And there we go, just this one with a title of search engine. 
that's really quite amazing. You can see from this, you can get really specific when a class won't work, an ID won't work, or anything else, you know, an element or a child selector, you can rely on this attribute selector to really hone down and, and get the, uh, the element that you want. But hold on, there's more. We can do more. Uh, we can do something called pattern matching, okay? And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna give you this example. Now, to give an element multiple classes, we just put a white space or a space bar in between the classes and separate them that way. So we'll give this a, a class of halls as well, okay? And say we want every span which has a class of deck. Now you would think we'd do this, yeah? Class equals deck. And that should work. That should call, uh, color these three here uh, purple. However, this one here has multiple classes associated with it. And the value of this class is deck white space halls, which is not this. So this one will not be picked up. These two will, but not this one. So how do we get around this? Well, we use what's called the tilde. Um, and that's this thing here, this little squiggly line. And we put it before the equal sign. And this pattern match is saying that we want the value of deck to appear anywhere in a space delimited list, okay? So that's saying if it has the class of deck, even if it has multiple other classes associated with it as well, that doesn't matter, we'll still pick it up. So let's view this in a browser, just to make sure. Oops, open with Chrome. And yeah, there we go guys, all these three spans here, they're all purple, okay? So that's how we attribute match Sorry, that's how we pattern match to multiple classes. Now, we can do other things. We could target specific sections of the, um, the attribute. So say, for example, we have, I don't know, a, a few links here that are downloads. A href equals, um, I don't know, something.pdf, all right? And PDF file. And what we'll do is we'll just copy this. So we've got a couple of them. So imagine that you want to style your PDF links, your download links, a bit differently than any other link. Well, we can do this. We can, and we can change this so they're not identical, something to .pdf. And what we'd do is we'd say we want all our A's, yeah? And then we're opening our attribute part of the selector and then the href is gonna be the attribute we're looking at. And what we want is that we wanna style the PDF downloads differently. So the ending of these hrefs has to be PDF because the .pdf, .pdf. So the way we do this is by putting a dollar sign here. And then if we put PDF, what we're saying here guys is that grab all the A links that have an href attribute associated with it that ends in PDF. That's what this dollar sign means, end in PDF. So it's dollar sign equals PDF, okay? So we're gonna color those, what if we're not used, green. Okay, so that should just be these two here. So let's view this in the browser again. Um, open this up, show an explorer. Open with Chrome. Brilliant, there it is guys, we've got the PDF file styled differently. So this is really, really flexible stuff, <laughs> and there is more. We can have um, an attribute starting with something, the way we do that is with a carrot. Now it's not gonna be PDF, it's gonna be HTTP. And that would kind of signify that this is gonna be an external link, okay? So then we'll call it our external links um, pink, why not? So we're saying here, grab all the A's which have a href attribute associated with it and they start, that's what the caret symbol here signifies, is HTTP, so that should be this and this. They're the two external links. So let's see if that works. We'll view this in a browser one last time. And there we go guys, how awesome is that really? Um, they're colored pink. And you can see hopefully now that this attribute selector business is amazing. We can hone in right down to individual elements with specific links or specific titles, anything that you want.
Okay, so really great selectors. So if you have any questions about this whatsoever, uh, feel free to comment below and I'll try my best to answer all of those. Um, if you enjoy these videos, please like them, please share them or subscribe. I'm going to see you uh, guys in the next one coming very soon where we're going to cover pseudo selectors.